Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a website from scratch using WebStarts. To get started, go to webstarts.com and click on Get Started, it's free. On the next page you'll be able to choose a design for your website and since this video is all about creating a website from scratch, I'm going to go ahead and choose the Start From Scratch Design by clicking Select. Next, you'll need to fill out your name, email address, and choose a password that you would like to use with your WebStarts account. Once you've selected as a design and chosen, once you've entered your email address and chosen a password, it's time to choose a web address for your website. You can choose from either of these two options. The first one is to use a free.webstarts.com address, so that would be like my site from scratch. Dot webstarts.com, or you could choose to use a top level domain like .com.net.org. If you do choose to go that route, it will require you to become a paying customer. Click continue once you've chosen that web address, or click that choose later button. Now we're in the WebStarts dashboard. I'm going to close out this preview video, and you can see a thumbnail of my website that I'm working on from scratch. To begin editing the pages of the website, I just click on Edit Site. After a couple of moments, the Web Starts page editor will load, and then I can begin working on the pages of my website. Before I do that, though, I want to give you a little tour around to show you where you can access some different things. If you want to add a new page or edit an additional page, you do that by clicking up here. So if you're ready to create a new page, you would click here and then create a new page. And then if you have multiple website pages, you would access them here in this dropdown. The next thing I want to call your attention to is this top section where if you select elements in that top section, they're highlighted in green. That's the header area and it stays the same on every page of your website. You can choose to disable the header by unchecking show header right here. Just like the header, the footer shows the same way on each page of your website. This is done just to make it easy for your website visitors to navigate from page to page. For example, if they have a menu, or if you have a menu in your uh, top part, your header, uh, it will be in the same place on every page and people won't get lost trying to figure out where to click to go from page to page. In this main body section where it says start from scratch, that's the main area where you'll be changing the content on an individual page. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to first show you how to delete this start from scratch text. All you need to do is select it. Any element in Web Starts, you can drag and drop wherever you would like it to appear. And you can also use handles to resize those elements. Just keep that in mind. Now these elements are layered. That means they're stacked on top of each other. So you can literally go over here, add a new element, let's say for example, a box, and then you can drag it and it will appear in front of the other elements on your page. So this can get a little confusing at times if you're not paying attention to uh, which layer is where. For example, if I were to ask you, where does it say start from scratch right now, you'd say nowhere, but it's there, it's just behind this box. If you ever want to change the layer that an element is on, you can select the, the element and then choose to either bring it to the front, bring forward, send backward, or send all the way to the back. So just be careful to make sure that you're keeping track of your elements. If you ever lose track of your elements, you can highlight them all by clicking edit, select all, and then that will show you all the elements that are on a given page. When you first start to design your website, it's a good idea to design the general structure of your first page and then create duplicates of that page so you have an idea about how to keep some conformity when creating new pages of your website. So since this is from scratch, I know there's some basic things that I'm gonna want on my website. One is I'm gonna want this navigation menu that lets me move from page to page but I want to have it on the right side of my header. The next thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that my company name is at the top of every page. So I'm just gonna drag up this 
text, and then you can see this little alert that says it's added to the header and it's gonna appear at the top of every page. I can edit the contents of this text just by double clicking in it, and now I'm just going to say company name, and that would just be your company name. Uh, you know, I'm just using this for an example. The next thing that I noticed is that I'd like to have my company name aligned left because I'm going to put a logo right here and I think it would go nicely with it. You can use a logo that you created uh, that's an image. Just upload it from your local computer. Let's see if I have a good one in here that I can use. Okay, I have this barbershop logo on my local computer. I'm just going to use that for the sake of demonstration. So I guess this is going to be a barbershop website. I'm just going to insert that onto my page. So that, the first thing I notice is that's very big. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink it down. I can do that just by using those handles and dragging towards the middle. And then notice that I'm cropping that image so parts of the images kind of disappear outside of the guidelines if I uh, try to resize in a certain way. If you want to make sure that your image will always be scaled keeping the proportions you'd want to choose the fit option. So I selected the image, clicked on the settings cog and selected the fit option. That just lets me resize it without cropping any of the image. Okay, so now I've dragged that logo into the spot where I think it looks nice. And since this is a barber shop, I'm just going to call this Adams Barber Shop. Okay, so now I've got my logo, I've got my company name, and I have my navigation. I think that's all that I want to have up here in my header section. But you know what? I really want this logo to pop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the font on that. And I really don't like any of the fonts that I have selected with this template. So I'm going to click add font. And then I'm going to choose from one of over the seven or there's 700 different fonts that you can choose from in web starts because it uses the Google fonts database. So I'm going to add a couple of fonts that I think are interesting. See, I want something that's kind of, you know, like that. So you can add whatever fonts you want. I'm just going to add a couple. And then I'm going to change this font. Now, I want all of my large very obvious text to look like this font. So I'm going to set it as a default by clicking on the design tab and then click text style. And then I'm going to change this heading L style, which is what is applied to that text. And that's why it's highlighted when I hover over heading L. And then I'm going to choose that font, Serena. I like that. So notice it kind of changed the way that the text is formatted. So I'm going to actually go ahead and reduce the size a little bit down to 36 pixels and then I'm going to just kind of reposition it again so everything looks nice. The next thing that I want to add to my website is the main section here and I'm going to get rid of this box that I added earlier. So I click on it and I click to delete it. And then I'm going to add some new text to my page. And this is going to be a headline. So it's going to be like, hey, what is my website all about? That's what I want to say. So I'm going to add some text. I'm going to choose heading medium since I made the other heading large my logo font. And then I'm just going to expand this out because I know that my headline is going to take up a good amount of room. And I also know my headline is going to be centered. So I'm going to go format center for that text. And then you can see I just drug that text box to the center of my page and that's what that pink guideline appears for. Double clicking in the text box and then I'm going to put whatever my headline text is. So I'm just going to say affordable and stylish haircuts by a pro. Let's see if I can See that? All right. 
So that's kind of my headline. So if you came to my website, you'd be like, okay, this is definitely about, you know, Adam's Barbershop. He does haircuts or whatever. But this looks a little bland. I think it would be a good idea to have an image. You can upload images from your local computer, but you can also get images from the Web Starts Image Library, which is really helpful. So let's add an image. Let's go over here, go add image. And then let's get an image from our image library. I'm gonna use the search tool and I'm just gonna say barber because I have a feeling that there's probably some photos for barbers. And indeed, you can see those right there. So now I just want to choose one that kind of reflects, you know, what I'm all about. So I'm just going to scroll through these and look at them for a minute. See if there's anything that really pops. I'm going to choose one of these top ones. Those are kind of the better quality. I kind of like this one because it's a little blurry. So once I select it, I click insert image and then it's going to fetch that image and then insert it onto my page. Okay, so that image is on my page, but it appears right in front of my headline. I don't like that. So I'm going to move it down here. I'm going to center it. I still feel like that's not really the way that I want to project my website. What I want is I want one of those big hero images they're called where the image takes up the width of the page. And you can do that to any image just by clicking that full width option and then dragging it up. Now, as soon as I drag this up, it's going to be in front of my headline. I don't like that, so I'm going to select that headline and I'm going to bring it to the front. Okay. I feel like this hero image should be about 600 pixels tall but it's a little bit hard to tell exactly how many pixels it is tall without turning on this element position or by clicking on this resize by value. Here you can see it's exactly 600 pixels. I'm just gonna close up this bottom here. And my text now doesn't stand out when it's uh, in front of that image. So I'm gonna go over here to my design icon, click heading M, and I'm gonna change the default text color to white. You know, if I was to do this and this was the only place that I thought I would have this white text on my website, I might want to just select the text and then just choose to make it white down here. Uh, the reason why is because uh, everywhere that I add that heading M text now, it's going to be white by default. So I'll have to change it to black if, let's say, for example, I put it on a light background. Now you can use these guidelines to you know, kind of center your your headline. But I'm actually going to want my headline kind of towards the top. And then the other thing I'm going to add is a good call to action for people to schedule an appointment. Because to me, that's the number one thing I want people to do when they come to my website. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click Add Button. And then I'm just going to add this medium-sized button. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to link it to my contact page, but I haven't yet cr created my contact page. So I'm just going to choose to link it to itself for the moment. We'll come back and link it to the contact page once I've created it. And I don't want that text to say click here. So I select the button and then I'm going to change the text to say schedule a haircut. And I want that button to pop a little bit, so I'm going to change the color from black to a different color. Now you have your color themes right in here, and then you've got your grayscale, and then you have your standard colors, and then you can mix custom colors by clicking this option. And then also you can pull colors from an image by selecting this option and then choosing the image that you would like to pull colors from. I don't like my default color scheme. It's kind of this brown and green earthy tone. So I'm going to go over to design, click on colors, and then I'm going to choose something that I think pops a little bit better for, at least for my, my liking. I'm just going to choose this kind of very basic, um, 
Actually, you know what? I'm going to choose a different one. I'm going to choose... There's one right in here. I like this one. It's kind of got some neon greens and some grays and blues. Then I'm going to select the button again, and now I'm going to choose a color from my color scheme. I'm going to choose this blue right down here. Okay. Yeah, I'm liking the looks of that. Now, when people come to this page, I want there to be a little bit of animation to draw them to this uh, headline. So I'm going to select that text, click on the animation icon, and then I'm going to choose an animation that will be displayed when the web page loads. I kind of like the bounce in left. I mean, that was pretty good. I can play it again by click, clicking on play animation. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my button. So I'm going to select the button, but this time I'm going to do a bounce in right. So they're kind of coming from different directions. So if you want to preview what that looks like, you just click preview. And then you can see that my text is coming from over here on the left and then my button is coming from over here on the right. I'm going to click that out because I don't want to view the preview any longer. So I'm starting to get a general framework for my website, but I need to add some other pages. So I'm trying to think of what kind of things I want to have on the other pages. I think that this is working well as a landing page. I think I'd like to add links to my social media down here. So let's go ahead and do that. Also, I'm going to increase the size of these because I think for a barber, anybody in the style or fashion world should really have a good social media presence. And then we we'll click this edit icon and then I can enter the URLs for my various social networks right here. And then if I want to change the order in which these appear, I just use this little handle. So if I think like Snapchat is more important than Instagram, I can just change the order. I can add more icons if I want different social networks. There's quite a few that I'm not using. But once you're ready, just go ahead and click update and then that'll update that little social bar right there. I also want when people click or hover over this social bar, I want there to be kind of that blue hover effect. So I click on the social bar itself and now I'm just selecting the border and the background of the actual icon as being that blue. So now when I hover over it, it has that nice little blue hover over effect. I'm going to go up here and save my changes so I don't lose them. I'm going to close out this window so it doesn't pop up every time. Then if I want to view my website, I can click view site. And that's what it looks like right there, published live. Now, Let's go ahead and click and create that contact page. I can do that by going here and clicking on new page or file new, or I can just click this icon in the top left. And I can choose to either copy from an existing page or I can create a blank page. And the way that that works is if you have an existing page and you like the layout of that page, for example, let's say you uh, created the home page and you want to just edit the contents of that page, the easiest thing to do is just make a copy of it. And you can name the copy whatever you want. So in this case, my copy is going to be the contact page. Now, if I would have chosen a blank page, I would have just been constructing a new page from scratch. But since I made a copy, it looks identical to my home page. I don't want it to look identical to my home page. So I'm going to delete some of the things. Okay, like for example, all of this, just by selecting them. And then I want to add things that are appropriate for the contact page. So I'm gonna go over here and click add and I'm gonna choose content blocks and then I'm gonna choose contact. And then that's gonna present me with some options that I can add to my page really easily like that have to do with contact. So it's like a whole contact section. Notice it was added to the bottom of the page. It's not a problem. I can grab this whole strip that all these elements are attached to, and I can drag the whole thing up all at once. And now I have this great looking contact page. Now I want to say contact page right here, and I want this to, or contact us, and I want this to be reflective of the same font that I used for my headline, which was that heading M, but here you can see 
my styles are in black and white. So on my homepage, I was using white as the background style. Also, I noticed that these buttons aren't the same as what I was using on my homepage. So I'm just gonna change that by clicking on the same style. So what I did is I clicked on the form itself and then I clicked style and then I chose one that matched the button style on the homepage. All right, this is starting to look pretty good. Now you can go through here and you can fill out your address and your phone number and you can resize this map if you want. Once you put in uh, a map on your website, you can double click on that. You can add your address to it. You can create a directions map. We have a bunch of videos on that. If you want to change the information that you ask for in this form, you can do that by double clicking on the form. And then of course you can just add fields by clicking on them and you can rearrange these so on and so forth. When you're ready to make those changes, you click update form. I'm gonna leave my form as it is. And then I'm gonna add a, an about us page. And I'm gonna do that by just clicking on new page. Oh, I wanna save my changes because I don't wanna lose those. And then I'm gonna copy this contact page, but this time I'm gonna call it about. And I'm gonna click create. And that makes me an exact replica of that contact page. But you know what? This isn't about information, this is contact information. So I'm gonna select the strip and then I'm gonna delete all of these elements that are contained within this strip all at the same time. So let me show you how I do that. I click on the strip, then I click on delete and then it's gonna ask me if I'm sure I want to delete the form since that's an app. And I click yes and then that's gone. I want to make this an about page, so I'm just gonna use a content block that's of the about category. So I click add content block, and then I have content, well, let's see, crew was one of them. I like this crew one right here, so I'm gonna add that. And then that just presents me with an option to go in here and fill out, like these are the people that run, make the business happen. You know, I can just go out and, and I can fill that in quickly. Once again, always saving your changes, making sure you don't lose those. So now you can notice as I'm going along adding these pages that my menu is having the pages automatically added to them. So every time you create a new page, that page name is gonna appear on the menu. And let's see how that works on the live site. I click view site. If I click on contact, I go to the contact page. About, I go to the About page. Home, I go to the Home page. Oh, and that's right, I had a button that I added to the Home page and I needed to remember to link it to the Contact page that I created. So let's go back to the Home page up here. We just choose the Home page to edit. Let's click on the button, then let's click on the Connected Hyperlink and then let's select the Contact page from the dropdown and then click Create Link. Once again, saving our changes. Now when I go to my home page and click on the schedule a haircut, I, it will take me to the contact page and I can go ahead and send in the form for scheduling my haircut or whatever. Now you can go through this process and you can also do things like add a blog or a store. All you need to do is click on these and then they'll add a blog section or a store section to your website. And once you have your website the way that you like, just be sure to go over here, click add domain, find a good top level domain name for your website. So if this was Adam's Barbershop, maybe I'd want adamsbarbershop.com if it's available. Let's just see. See if it's available. Yeah, so it's already taken, but it gives me some suggestions right here, you know, so I could do like adamssalon.com. I mean, that's not bad. I could click on that and then You'll go through here and click continue if you, you confirm you want that. And then in the last step, you'll be asked to choose a plan and, and then check out. And then once you choose a plan, if it's a pro plus or a business plan, after checkout, that domain name will automatically be configured to work with your website. So after about 90 seconds, you'll be able to go to adamsbarbershop.com or in this case, adamssalon.com and you'll be able to see that website that you just built. If at any time you need to get back to the dashboard, click this little arrow over here, and it'll navigate you back to the dashboard where you will see a thumbnail of your site that's generated each time you make changes. 
If you want to create more websites in the same account or view them, you can click on this little green orb and then it will show you all the websites in your account and give you the option to create a new website. If you want to edit the existing website, of course, you just click select. Another thing to keep in mind is you can access backups to your website just by clicking on the backups option right here. So that way you can create a backup if you want to experiment a little bit, but then go back later because let's say you created a design you didn't like. Um, you can add all these apps to your Web Starts website. They're really helpful. I mean, things like live chat, SSL, which is great for security purposes. You can add email marketing, business email, so you can have your matching email address to go with the domain you selected. So I could have adam at adamssalon.com as my email address, so on and so forth. That just about covers it. Obviously, you can take this as far as you want. You can create as many pages as you'd like. Uh, this just is a basic three-page website for this demo. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to visit webstarts.com to create your very own free website and see more videos like this.